<laughs> Hello, everybody. We're going to give everybody a couple minutes to get into the room here before we get started. We're going to be working tonight with chalks. If you're not familiar with them, this is what we're going to be doing. So we'll watch to see people come into the room. All right, I see some people are are popping in now. We'll give everybody a couple minutes to to get in here before we get started doing the chalking tonight. And we're going to be doing this as a non-fired finish that we'll be doing um, over acrylic stains. And I'll show you several different techniques tonight. I see somebody's trying to video call me right now on Facebook, and I can't take that call because I'm live. I don't. I'm it's somebody who's been in the lives before, so maybe she's having a hard time finding it. But it, this will be recorded, so it'll be available for anybody who can't make it to the live show. All right, I see we got quite a few people coming into the room. Um, if you guys um, have any comments, just make them in the little chat section on there. My wife Janine is here. She's going to be watching for comments. Um, if you are interested in the mystery box, um, for the first 10 minutes tonight, anybody who puts the words mystery box in there um, will get signed up for um, the mystery box. And I don't see any comments coming up on my screen yet. Do you see anything mm -hmm. on? Oh, you do. Okay. I see no comments whatsoever on my screen. Mm -hmm. So it's good that we're on different computers, I guess. Um, so if you're not familiar with the mystery box, the way that that works is if you type in the words mystery box, um, Janine will mark those names down on slips. She's going to put them in a bowl. And then we will draw a name out toward the end of the live tonight. And it is a medium flat rate box that we have filled with goodies. Um, there's usually about $100 worth of merchandise in there. I don't tell you exactly what's in that box, but I will tell you is it has a lot to do with what we're doing tonight. And it may feature some new items that some of you haven't seen yet. Um, and if your name is drawn out, the mystery box is $50. That covers shipping as well. And uh, that's anywhere in the USA. If you're outside of the USA and you want to get in in that mystery box, um, we will let you know what the shipping is if your name happens to be drawn. We give away one mystery box. It's only during the live event that we do it. So if you're watching this as a recording, it doesn't do any good to type in mystery box at that point because it's, it's already done. Um, and if the person whose name is drawn, um, we will open and reveal what's in the mystery box. If they decide that it isn't something that they want, um, they can pass it on and we will simply draw another name out um, until we get somebody who wants that mystery box. We don't want to stick anybody with anything that they don't want. So tonight, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use chalks. And chalks on ceramics, it's a non-fired finish. Um, so it's done on bisque. It works on pieces that are stained with acrylics. Uh, it also works on glazed pieces that are sprayed with porcelain spray, but porcelain spray isn't made anymore. And so if you've got porcelain spray, you can, you can glaze the pieces, you can spray it with porcelain spray, and then use the chalks over the top. Um, but since the porcelain spray isn't made anymore, I've tried some other sprays, and it doesn't work as well um, as that porcelain spray did, because you need kind of a dull surface. And that porcelain spray over a glaze gave you a really nice smooth surface just like porcelain. So I'm going to flip the camera down here. Janine is busy writing names on there. And when 10 minutes is, is up, um, we're just going to announce that we're done taking names for the mystery box. Um, the chalks we're going to be working with are these pastel chalks. These happen to be made by Royal and Langnickel. Um, years ago, Gare had chalks that they came in little plastic cases. I still have some of those, I think, in my workroom. I meant to, to pull those out and forgot to pull those out. But we're we'll going to be working with these. And these are um, a pastel stick chalk. What I like about these is they come in this tray that locks the chalks in place. So you don't have the chalks just loose um, moving around or that they're sliding. So when you take the brush and you start picking up the color, you can just rub on top of this to pick up the color um, and then put it right back in the box. There's a plastic cover that goes over the top of this as well. So I'm going to show you several techniques tonight. One of the techniques I'm going to show you is over an iridescent pearl finish. 
Um, and I kind of played around a little bit with the colors on here, and I'll show you how that is done. We're also going to be working on pieces that are just stained with white acrylic base coat. Um, and I'm going to be showing you on a shape that is painted with acrylic, and the pumpkin was painted with orange and green, and I'm going to show you how to do shading. Chalks are great also for things like blushing cheeks, and I'm going to show you on the snowmen how to do that. A lot of times people try um, on cheeks to add blush either by sponging or dry brushing color, and sometimes it gets a little wild and crazy with the color um, on the cheeks, and chalks are great for doing that. Now, one thing um, about chalks is that they will fade. If you put them in direct sunlight, um, when I had my retail stores, we did some pieces and we set them in the window and they were in the window for about a month where the sun was beating in on them every day. And what we found is that the color faded on that side of the piece. So avoid putting them on display in a window um, or in direct sunlight. If they're just in your house under normal light conditions, they're fine. Don't do pieces that are going to be for in your lawn. Um, because over time they will fade if they're exposed to direct sunlight. So this piece I've got base coated just with white acrylic stain. Um, you can use any acrylics. Um, you want it to have a dull matte finish. You don't want a glossy acrylic color. So some acrylics that are designed like for canvas, um, they might have kind of a sheen to them when they dry. The, the matter of the finish, the better. You want to work on top of some type of acrylic, and so like the Mako, the softy white works really well for this, and that's what I used on both of the snowmen that I'm going to be working with tonight. The fish is done, and it's base coated with the Mako white iridescent. Now, they have a white pearl, and they have an iridescent. The iridescent has kind of a, a rainbow finish to it, um, and the chalks work really well over the top of that. The white pearl will work as well. And even though this has kind of a shiny surface, the chalks do work really well on top of that color. And then the pumpkin was just done using the Mako um, orange softy for the pumpkin area and the forest green I used on the stem. So you can do this over just about any colors. Now, instead of a white base coat, you may decide to go with something like medium portrait for a base coat. So play around with the colors, and you can do things like the pumpkin I'm going to show you, where you paint areas with color and then just use the chalks for doing shading and highlighting on the piece. But we'll start out with the snowman doing this on, on the white surface. And you want to make sure that the colors are really nice and dry. You don't want to be working with color that's damp or where color might be puddled in a crevice and you go to chalk it and there's wet paint that comes out and gets mixed in and gets on the brush. We're going to be working with, um, the, with the chalks. I like to work with hog bristle brushes. And there's you probably can't see it in the camera, but there's a little dust cloud going up toward the camera here um, from the chalk that was in the brush. You want the brushes to be dry. You don't want them wet, um, and it needs to be that stiff hog bristle because we're going to kind of scrub to pick up the color, and then when we apply it to the piece, we want to scrub it in. If you use a real soft bristle brush or even a, a Taclon brush, it's not going to work as well as a nice stiff um, hog bristle brush. I like with the chalks, I like working with the flats better than the rounds um, with dry brushing. I tend to work with the rounds more than I do with the flats. So with the chalking, I do like using the flat brushes. And I've got a whole bunch of different sizes here that I'm going to be working with. And the brushes, like I said, you want them to be dry. You don't want them to be wet. So if you have to wash a brush out or if it's damp, really work it on a towel or paper towel to get it nice and dry. A lot of times when a brush is wet and I want to get it dry, I'll kind of drag it across my fingers like this until it's nice and dry and then pat it on a, a towel. Um, chalks can be used with water, and we'll talk a little bit about that um, later on this evening. So have a variety of different sizes of brushes. Have your chalks out, your piece is base coated, and it's dry. So I kind of did part of the back of the snowman 
so that you can see the colors usually are, are real nice and pastel. So this scarf, I actually used the darkest purple. And I'm going to grab my brush here. And, and when I go between colors, like I use this with the dark brown, I usually just flick it like this and get any of the loose chalk out of the brush. When I'm all done chalking, I'll wash the brush out. But between colors, I just kind of give it a flick. Even though these bristles are a little dark on here, they're stained from a previous chalk, I can go in and I can pick up the chalk color with that brush. And when the colors are brand new and you haven't used them, there's almost like a hard shell or coating on some of the chalks. And so you have to kind of scrub into that chalk and work your way through kind of that smooth coating on the outside and you'll start to get kind of dust on the, the chalk. You'll see a little pile of it and then um, the brush will be loaded and then you can go onto your surface and do kind of a, a scrubbing motion depositing that color over the top. All right, we're just about ready to close off the um, names that we'll be taking for the mystery box. So if you haven't got your name in there, I see Janine writing as quickly as she can over there to get everybody who's commented in there. She's got a whole sheet of paper full already, and then she's going to cut that apart. So as I deposit the color onto the surface, um, you kind of brush that color out. And when you run out of color, you just go and pick up some more and work that. And you're basically scrubbing it into the surface. All right. It looks like we've got, okay, all the, the names and we're closing off the um, mystery box. Janine has all the names written down of everybody who has signed in. There's some questions though. What about chalk over Duncan True Matte Marshmallow Cream? Um, over matte glazes, they're usually too smooth that the chalk doesn't grab on top of um, even the matte, the matte glazes and even the True Mats, which now are discontinued um, product for the time being until Mako decides if they're going to manufacture those colors. And then someone's wondering if these are special chalks or like sidewalk chalks or chalk markers. These are um, pastel chalks, and so they're a little bit higher grade than sidewalk chalk. These are designed for um, artists doing like pastel portraits and things with them. Um, I do sell them on my website, learnfiredarts.com, and we'll talk about the event specials and things as we're going through tonight. So you can see that I'm just kind of scrubbing it in and you'll see that there are some little puddles of extra chalk on there and you can either kind of blow those off of there or just take the brush and dust those off of that surface. Now, every once in a while you get your finger in and you get color where you don't want it. And so I'll usually take another brush to have there to kind of brush it off or if it won't brush off, that's where you'll have your one brush that's wet and you can use that to kind of scrub that color off of the surface. But you want to make sure that that's good and dry before you chalk on that area. So I'm just going to grab a little paper towel here and I usually don't worry about taking chalk off of the piece until I'm pretty much done and going to be working on that area. Oh, someone asked about if you can spray with a fixative to set the chalk, which yeah, and we'll talk about um, sealing, um, and you can... I'm not sure if these came in before you said something. Yeah, was... yeah, Jean was, was writing, so if I'm, if I'm talking about things that I've already kind of answered, or we will get to um, sealing. So spray sealers are what you're going to use to seal these in the end. If you make a mistake, can it be removed? Yep, and that's where you just take a wet brush and, and you can remove that chalk if it gets on an area where you don't want it. Yep, and so one of the things that with all of the nice colors that come in here, you've got 36 different colors that come in this assortment. And like the purples, there's multiple shades of purple, lots of shades of blue, greens, reds, oranges, yellows. And so if I want to build up shading on here, I can go into other colors of purple and I can add some more color to get some variation in the purples. Um, 
when I'm going to go to another color, I'm just going to flick that brush. I'm done with the the purple on here, and I want to go to the bright lime green on his hat. And again, when the color is new and you haven't used it, you have to scrub a little bit to kind of get that color to powder. If you just rub over it a couple times, um, you're not going to be picking much color up at all. And it, it's really, I'm kind of scrubbing in a circular motion or back and forth to scrub that color into the surface. Um, I'm going to go with, I think, this kind of aqua With Duncan color. matte sealer spray, you know? No, the matte sealer is is really too glossy as well. It was the, the porcelain spray that they had that was ideal for spraying over glaze. And that Duncan actually discontinued that. And they came out with like a, they had a, a super matte, I think, spray or something. And and we tried that and that too just had too much of a sheen. The porcelain spray, what was nice about the porcelain spray is it would dull a shiny surface. So if something was done with glaze, it would actually completely dull it. Um, and it had almost like a, a gritty kind of finish to it that the colors would grab onto. Is this just bisque that you're doing it on right now? Yeah, this is bisque that's just base coated with white acrylic and, and dried well. But that porcelain spray, it had a little bit of a tooth to it so that the color would would grab. I didn't hear you say the tooth part and someone asked about the tooth and I was like, well, what? <laughs> yeah. I was too focused. Dental, dental work here. She was so concerned about getting all those mystery box things in there. So you can see the, the colors as I add them here. Now, one of the things that I like about using chalks on snowmen is... Sometimes when, when people do pieces and it's white, if you antique it and use either an oil-based antiquing or do a wash of color over the top of it, sometimes the white gets a little kind of dirty looking. And so the nice thing with the chalks is I can go with one of the light blue colors and I can take that and just do a little bit of highlighting. And I think I'm going gonna, yeah, gonna to go with the darker blue here, try the darker next shade here um, you can use that to kind of highlight on the white so that it's not so stark and where I've got indentations in here I can take and kind of rub a little color into those areas and it gives you a little bit of a blue hue to the snow rather than like a brown antiquing or a black antiquing or even a blue antiquing over the whole piece sometimes will come out making it look kind of dirty. Someone was wondering if they could sell their, if they had a whole bottle of it, if they could sell it. You probably bucks. could. You could get big bucks for that. Can you layer a light color as a highlight over a dark color and maybe seal in between? I would yeah. recommend doing a um, light color and then doing your shading with a darker color over the top. If you seal it with matte spray, um, you're probably going to get it a little bit too smooth that you're going to have a hard time getting the chalk to stick to that matte spray. With the porcelain spray, you used to be able to do that where you would um, spray in between to build up layers of color to, to intensify them. But with all these colors, kind of go with your lighter colors and then do your shading with the darker. And I'll show you a little bit more of that on the pumpkin using the yellow over the top of darker colors. Do you designate certain brushes for chalk or can you use those for other things? Oh, you can use them for other things. Just make sure that they're clean and they're dry when you go to use them with the chalks. That's probably the most important thing that I can say. And if anyone is still commenting, Mystery Box, we're done with that. So. Yep, Mystery boxes is, is done. Janine's got all the names. Um, we do that the first 10 minutes. Comment, you can still comment, <laughs> but she's not going to do anything about it. Um, and the, the idea is to get everybody in here, you know, close to the beginning. So we do the first 10 minutes. We take the names of everybody, and that's a lot of names. She's probably got 100 names there that she's written down. 
And now she's mumbling to herself over there, and I can't. Oh, she cut off a little bit of somebody's. Eh, if I draw that one, we'll, yeah. <laughs> oh, could you use hairspray? Oh. Hairspray Aquanet. to seal it. Aquanet, and <laughs> then... They didn't say Aquanet either. <laughs> yeah. That, actually, that probably would work. Yeah, I think if you did hairspray on it. Hair really poofy, too. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to add the green on here and then I'm I'm going to show you doing the cheeks. And so it it really goes fast to do the chalking and I hate to say you can't mess it up but if you get color where you don't want it, you just wipe it off. Um, use a damp brush if you need to. And the chalks last a long long time and they're not expensive. This set of chalks we've got on sale right now for $12.99. All right, so I've got all of the color. I'm going to take a really tiny little brush here and I'm going to do the orange on the nose and then I'm going to show you what we're going to do on the cheeks. And the colors are pretty intense. I'll hold this up closer to the camera so you can see. All right, you can see that the orange, the blue shading around on the snowman, so he's not so stark white. Oh, oh I forgot to do his tassel on his oh, hat. Let me do that quick. Said they, they use hairspray. And that, that works. With, yeah. With fixative work, I guess, with hairspray works, fixative would as well. Fixative, um, I'm thinking fixative is like a, you're talking about a spray sealer, um, and that it would just be if it's if it has a sheen to it it may make it a little bit more difficult to get the, the chalks to stick. Oh, so, okay, someone was like talking about the hairspray. Do they mean as a sealer or to layer the color? To layer the color. I was taking it as layering the color. So if I did a layer on here and say the purple on the scarf, I wanted to seal what was on here and then go with some more purple over it to intensify it, I could do that. But I can also like, where there's an overlap here of the scarf and if I want to create a shadow there I can take more of that dark purple and I can brush that in there and kind of scrub it in to give a little bit of a deeper tone there but if you wanted to build up the colors on there then spray it with the the hairspray and then build up some more color oh and how do you correct mistakes um, you can correct mistakes I showed earlier in, in the live, just taking a brush that's wet and you can wash the color right off of the piece and then make sure that that surface is dry. All right, cheeks. So if I'm working on, um, a lot of times pieces you might be working on will be some form of a flesh color. On this one, the snowman is white, um, but whatever color is in the background, I will usually take some of that color in the chalk. So in this case, it's gonna be white. If I'm working with um, a lighter flesh tone, I'm probably going to go with like one of these lighter, fleshier, creamier colors, um, a darker tone. I might go into, you know, a darker tone. But what I want to do is I want to do kind of a dusting. And I don't do makeup, but I know like some of you that do wear makeup, you know, you've got kind of a foundation. And if you just go and put... And I should have asked Janine about this, but if you just put blush on your cheeks and you don't have any foundation, you probably get kind of red spots there. And it's not, it doesn't blend out as well. And you might look, um, or I was going to say a hooker, but um, like, you know, a little bit too much makeup on there. So yeah, Tammy Faye might be dating ourselves. And that's more when you get to the eyes that I talk about Tammy Faye. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of putting down a foundation of some of the white chalk on there. And, and you can't see that. But again, if I was working on different flesh tones or a different color, um, I would use a, a color accordingly to kind of match what's on there. Because if I just go into the blush color and I put that on the cheek, it's going to be very stark. And so by putting kind of a dusting of a foundation of the white on there, then when I pick up a little you bit of this blush. Other people who know who Tammy Faye is. 
Yeah, I'm sure there are some people in there that. Do you spray the piece before adding your chalk and then after seal? Nope, no spraying before. No spraying before. Nope. So now I've picked up a little bit of that blush, and I'm just going to kind of lightly dust the cheeks with that blush color. And because the white is on there, this blush color won't stick as much as it would if I didn't. And I think that's that showing up okay. I can see that on the camera. All right. So that's, you know, basic how easy it is to do the little snowman. Now the eyes, I'll go back with acrylic and paint in the eyes on there. If the blush on the cheeks got to be a little bit too dark, what I could do is go back with some of the white and I could kind of blend that out and get rid of some of that blush that's on there. If I really didn't like it, wet brush, wash it off, dry it or let it dry and go back right over the top of it and add some more color. So that's how easy it is working over just white acrylic. Now I wanna show you on the fish. This one was done with the iridescent white pearl. Got some questions? Um. Well, there's a friend who's not on Facebook. How would they watch it? It's a pub. You have a public page. Right? I have a public so page, so anybody can. And, yeah, if they don't have a Facebook account, um, they can still go in. And, yeah, and if the recordings, it's recorded after, and we're saving the recordings to the LearnFireArts.com Facebook page and my personal Facebook page, and we will be uploading them to our YouTube page. I think we've got one of the videos uploaded on there. And I've got somebody who's going to be editing the, the videos for me because I don't have time. And they will be available later on YouTube. But the lives, they're Facebook live events. And so if they're not on Facebook or they can't get on for some reason, then they're just, they got to wait till we get them on YouTube. All right. Uh, oh. these, someone asked if these are pastels or chalks. I mean, it yeah, they're chalk pastels. <laughs> and so it's, it's, and so, you know, we talked about sidewalk chalk isn't, probably as good a quality as this. Um, this is a, a chalk pastel. They are available on learnfiredarts.com. They're on special for $12.99 for the 36 colors. So this fish was base coated with the white iridescent pearl stain and let it dry. And that white iridescent has a sheen to it and it also has kind of a, a pearlescent Finish. And so the chalks, when you use them over the top of this, grab a little bit bigger brush here, I can take um, a light color like the yellow and I can go over the top of this and again kind of scrub it into the finish. I'm going to add some yellow. I'm going to go into some orange. And you can blend the colors into one another. So I did the yellow and then I'm taking the orange and I'm kind of overlapping that and blending it into the yellow. And if it gets too orange, I can always go back with a little bit more of the yellow and kind of blend back over the top of that. If I want to add some green, we're going to make this fish really colorful. I can take some green up here and blend that in. Go a little darker green. And that pearl gives you a really nice smooth surface, but allows you to really blend the colors well on top. Now, if I want to go with some of the purple on the fins here, and again, it's kind of scrubbing the color in a circular motion. And I can do this over the top of the entire fin and kind of brush that out. And then I can go back with the deeper purple and I can run that kind of along the crevice here to get a little bit of a deeper color. I can go into, let's go into some of the, the deep blues here. Deposit the color and kind of scrub it into the finish and then I'm going to kind of brush it out on that fin. If I want to add some color on his face here, let's see what color do we want to add. We'll add orange. That orange looks nice on here. I can take the orange
We'll add some blue on this fin. And you can see I'm kind of going right from color to color. And I'll usually, if there's a lot of color left in there, I give it a little flick to get that color out. But it's really easy to just keep adding color and blending color. Now, I did blue on these fins. And maybe I'm not crazy about the purple on that fin. Watch what I can do. I can go right with that blue right over the top of that and brush that out. It is harder, yeah, to get them to adhere to a glossier finish. This is bare bisque, right? Like we talked about before. Well, the, and this is bisque that's been base coated, yeah. Oh, that is. Well, what about yeah. the snowman was just that, No, that was, that was white. That was base coated with white acrylic. I told them the wrong thing. Oh. <laughs> um, someone has never used the acrylic. Do you just paint it at yeah, so the acrylic is, it's just a, an acrylic paint, just base coat. Usually with the white, I give a couple coats. And mm -hmm. if I'm concerned that maybe I don't have enough um, color or I've, I might have missed some areas, I can always go back um, and brush water over the top of it. And usually if you brush water over a piece that's base coated, um, if you've missed an area, it will um, show up kind of yellow on those bare areas. But then let that piece dry really well before. Um, Can you make the colors more vibrant and dark? And that's where we're talking about doing hairspray to seal what's on here and you can build up layers. Or if you have porcelain spray, you can use the porcelain spray mm -hmm. to build up those colors. Mm -hmm. Or just go with more dark, intense colors on the areas where you want the color. And I can also go back with acrylics and I can do designs or stripes and things on here too. So you're not just limited to the color of using just the chalks on here. If I wanna really get this deep and intense, I can go into this deep purple and I can run that along here and blend that into the greens. All right. I want to show you guys on the pumpkin. So this one wasn't base coated white. This was base coated with orange acrylic. If you weren't in here in the beginning, I showed the colors because I figured people would ask. This is the SS210 orange on the bottom of the pumpkin. And the stem was done with the SS276 forest, uh, forest green. And so, you know, sometimes I see pieces and people base coat them like this and they're like, oh, I'm all done. And to me, it's kind of flat. It needs, I like shading and things. And so you have options of antiquing pieces, doing washes on pieces, dry brushing on the pieces. Um, but chalks also work well. So on this side, I did a little bit of an area. And the way this is done is I took a brush and I did brown down in the crevices. And so I'm using here the darkest brown, picking up some of that color, and I'm kind of scrubbing that into the crevice. What again was the base coat on the fish, please? The base coat on the fish was the white iridescent, the Mako SS113. There's white iridescent and there's white pearl. The iridescent has more of kind of a rainbowy finish to it, more color where the white pearl is just white but kind of sparkly. So I can shade in the crevices of this pumpkin with any of the brown colors. And I could paint this pumpkin with um, white and do it all in chalk. But if you do white and you chalk, it generally comes out pretty pastel. So when you guys were asking about more intense colors, you can start out painting your piece as you normally would and paint the areas with the colors that you want and then create all of your shading just with the chalk. So this pumpkin, if I had done it white and added the orange, I would get 
get that up on the camera, I would get an orange finish, but look at how much more intense the orange is on this pumpkin because I've already base coated it with the orange. Then I can go, and it, I'm not sure how well this will show up on the camera, but to highlight the pumpkin, you can kind of see in this section the yellow on top of that. So I can take that yellow and kind of scrub that in on top of the orange to brighten up the highlights on here. I could also dry brush on here if I wanted. I'm going to show you some dry brushing on here too because the yellow lighter colors of chalk on top of darker color underneath doesn't show up as well as darker color on top of a lighter base coat. But the yellow, you can definitely see a difference between these two sections and this section where I haven't done any of the yellow on here. Christmas tree with lights, would the heat from the bulbs cause any issues with the chalks? No, the, the light, if, if you did a Christmas tree and you lit it up and the tree got warm, that warmth shouldn't do anything to the chalks. It's really direct sunlight that will fade those colors that you kind of need to be more concerned about. Now on the stem of this pumpkin, I went with some darker blacks and things in here. So I picked up the black and I shaded around the edges, shade down in the deeper crevices to get my shading. And um, you know, you may decide to go with more of a tan color on the stem and then build up your colors instead of going with um, a dark green on top of there. You're talking about finishes, right? at the end, right? Finishes, sealing finishes. Well, someone asked if you do hairspray to do layers, what finish coat is re recommended? Yeah, so then at the end you can use, if you want a gloss finish, you want a matte finish, you can use any finish that you want on, on the pieces at the end. So I wanted to show this snowman and I'm not going to sit and do the snowman. I have him all base coated with white, but if I wanted, I could paint the birdhouse with colors of acrylic. I could paint his scarf with, let's say I wanted the scarf to be pink and purple. I could paint the scarf with pink acrylic softy and then go back and do my shading with the chalking, kind of like I was doing here on the pumpkin. Um, but the blue on the snowman itself, I'm gonna flick the color out of here. Um, the blue on the snowman, I'm gonna go with this little bit yeah, we'll go with this deeper one here. This will show up really well. But I can go around with this blue and get all my shading done on the snowman. If the color gets a little intense, I can take another brush and kind of dust that off. If it gets too blue, I can also go with the white and lighten this up. Mahalo would like to know if we're learning this the May Retreat. This is a technique that we're going to be doing <laughs> in the May Retreat. And do you like the snowman, Mahalo? Because I think this is the piece that we're <laughs> going to be doing it on. And is, is the chalk, ru chalk rubbing off easily like when you're holding it in your hand? Um, that's a good question. So if there's powder on here before I either blow it off or dust that off of there and I touch it, there's a good chance I'm going to get it on my fingers and, and other areas that I touch, it's going to show up. And so I usually try to avoid touching it until I've either dusted off the powder that's on there or um, blown that, that dust away on top of that surface. But you can see the, the shading that you can get on top of the white, and you can make it as deep or intense as you want. I'm just going to show you on a couple other spots here other shades of the blue. So that one was this really rich, deep blue. I'm going to go into this lighter, more turquoisey blue to do a little bit up here. This will be a little bit lighter. We'll dust away the, the extra here. But I can go all the way down to these even lighter blues and use those and it will give you a little bit different look <laughs> than um, Cameron's trying to get into her room here. <clears throat> I'm set up right in front of her, 
her bedroom door here. And there's a prom dress blocking her way. <laughs> um, would spraying it with a spray finish help at all with the fading? Or urethane urethane? Yeah, like a urethane sealer. It 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 won't really help with the fading. Direct sunlight will fade the colors regardless of what type of sealer mm -hmm. you put on top of it. So this is this lighter blue here, doing that around here instead of that deeper, more turquoisey blue. So Sorry, some of the closed caption is not understandable. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of play around with the blues to kind of figure out, you know, what color you want on there. I'm going to show the cheeks on here because this is a little bit bigger surface and it'll probably show up better than it did on the little one. So I'm putting a dusting of the white powder that you can't really see <laughs> in the area and kind of around outside of the area where I'm going to put the blush color. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of the blush color and just kind of lightly rub that oh. in the area. Yes, Catherine, he said this will be a May retreat project, and someone else wants to know if you'll be treating, teaching it in, at the Melbourne event in August. I might be. I, I haven't. Australia? I didn't know that. Yeah, it's Melbourne, Melbourne, Florida, not <laughs> Melbourne, Australia. <clears throat> so I think you can see on the camera just kind of the light blushing that you get with that. And again, if it gets too deep, I can take white over the top of it and kind of blend that out and get kind of a soft look to that. All right. So I want to show you guys on the pumpkin I talked about, you know, we use the yellow chalk on top of there, but I want to show you too um, doing like dry brushing over the top of and my I broke the little plastic tip inside of this bottle, so I have to take the top off to get that out of there. It was dry brushing. I'm not going to go real deep into dry brushing, but that too is done with the stiff hog bristle brushes. The brush is dry, and um, I generally like to work with rounds when I do my dry brushing. And so I'll take and get a little bit of that color in the brush, and then either on like a paper bag or on a piece of paper towel. To be real wet and blotchy. A small section on here. Someone said, you're doing projects at the Florida show? And then Kathy is telling August 6th and 7th, right? And I think so. I don't Lisa have a... was commenting that since Tennessee is between Wisconsin and Florida, you could stop on your way. Oh, well, I'll see if United will stop and land. <laughs> oh, you're planning on not driving? I am planning to do some um, workshops in Alabama probably right after the Melbourne show. I've had several studios in Alabama contact me wanting me to come in and teach and some of them I've taught at before and um, some of them I have not. For some people but I don't see it freezing yet so oh it's bad. Any chance you might be coming to Ohio in the future? Um, Ohio, I, I have taught quite a bit in Ohio. Um, we used to, I used to teach every year at Ohio Ceramic Supply, um, and unfortunately, they have closed. COVID um, did not do well for them. Um, but Mako has um, a store, a retail store in their uh, factory, uh, Buckeye Ceramic Supply, and there probably will be some workshops at Buckeye sometime in the future. All right, so you can see how the yellow highlights when you dry brush, how different that is from trying to do chalk on top of darker colors. And so um, I could continue to dry brush the yellow on here to lighten that up. If I wanted to go back and I wanted the color more intense in the crevices, I could go back and pick up more of my 
darker chalks and get some of this brown and I can go back and I can intensify um, the crevices with more color to deepen mm -hmm. that has a as well. Garage in Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's pre-registration required for the ceramic show workshop. It, it will be. Um, it'll be up on our website as soon as we determine what <laughs> workshops we're going to be doing. Um, because it and and people can sign up on site as well, but I usually ship in product for the workshops based on the registrations ahead of time. All right. So once I've got all of my chalking done on the pieces, then I will seal them. If I do any dry brushing, I'll I'll get that dry brushing done, um, and then put a spray fixative on them. Brush on sealers do not work well with chalks. If you brush a sealer on there, when the chalk gets wet, it's going to want to, to move and, and flow with that sealer. So don't try to um, do the sealer with a brush on. Do a light coat of spray, do a second coat of spray, rather than doing one deep coat of spray. The other thing that I would do on these pumpkins, and I'm just gonna do, a little airy here is I will take a stiff bristle brush and I just put out some chocolate fudge softy on here. I've got a stiff bristled fan brush. This is a hog bristle fan brush. There are splatter brushes out there. Some people like to use toothbrushes, but I'm going to load this up with a little bit of thin down um, chocolate fudge and I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to pull the bristles so that they flick back toward the piece and gives me a nice little speckling of brown over the top of that pumpkin and I'll hold this up mm -hmm. so you guys can see it a little bit better. Well someone asked about if you're teaching in Waukesha? Did you yep, the Waukesha you? show in in so, August as oh, well. Really? Yep, yeah. and that as of that now released, is didn't it for a while or Well last year with COVID unfortunately okay. that got got canceled too, but you can see the little speckling mm -hmm. on there. I want some you to add some glitter. Some glitter. <laughs> I can think of a few people Tammy who might Short. be. In. Oh, I that was actually I was like, I was gonna say it's got to no, be Tammy, but I can't see if Tammy is in here. Yeah, so I could do some glitter on here too. But if I do glitter and it's a brush on glitter, I want to make sure that I seal it with a spray sealer to protect all those chalks that I've done, and then spray it, and then put my brush. If it's a liquid glitter, a brush on glitter. Um, if it's a sprinkle on glitter, you can sprinkle that on while the, the spray sealer is wet or put a brush on sealer on or an adhesive so that that glitter sticks on there as well. All right. I also wanted to show you guys, I, I talked about um, using chalks wet. And so rather than using a brush that's dry, you can get a brush wet and use chalks almost like watercolor. So if I wet this brush, and I go into the yellow and I pick up, oops, get this into the, the camera here. I've got the brushes wet and I'm picking up the color. I can take this and I can work on top of the surface and add the chalk this way. But it tends to kind of be streaky. And so I don't like it as well as I do working with the dry. I'm going to put some of the dark brown in here and go into those crevices just kind of depositing the color. Will there be a sign up for classes in Waukesha also? There will be. All of those things will be on, on the website. Yep. That's what I thought but before I replied with that. Yep. And so now I can take the brush. I kind of dabbed, washed it out, and I can take and I can kind of blend the brown and the yellow to get rid of that streaky defined look. But again, I don't like working with them wet as much as I do working with them dry. And I, I've never taught this as a workshop using them wet because most people tend to get them blotchy and streaky and have a really hard time getting the colors to blend. But they do work almost like a watercolor on top of that surface. And you can really build up colors um, with them wet a little bit easier than you can dry. So play around with the wet technique I, like I said, I don't like it as well as I do doing the dry technique on there. Someone um, said they used them wet and kind of almost painted with them. Yeah, and they're, they're, they're just, 
they're chalky and so it's hard when they're wet to get them to really blend and you can see kind of how blotchy and streaky that looks where when you use them dry you get kind of a nice soft blend of color down in the crevices on there some of the co people are commenting and it, it does look a little bit like it just is it it's real pixelated is that just a facebook like, that could be internet. I mean, I'm looking at it on my screen. Um, some weeks I, I watch the videos and um, we've got high definition cameras that we're working with um, and it's the highest setting that Facebook has, but sometimes it does yeah, kind of get a little pixelated and that's what you get for free. Um, you know, I can't really complain to Facebook that it's... It's not... Sometimes there's focus issues where it kind of goes in and out and things, and that seems to be pretty good tonight. And sometimes it could be your internet as well um, if you're if you're seeing a yeah, lot of I'm, pixelating. A lot of people are saying it's grainy and kind of freezes at times, but yeah, okay. that, there isn't really much. Yeah. All right. So, are there any other questions about the chalking techniques that are coming up? Oh, the other thing I was going to show you guys, I, I had brought out for my little snowman, um, some no-fired snow. If you haven't worked with no-fired snow, um, this comes, it's kind of a creamy, almost like frosting. And I usually use a palette knife to apply it. You can use a brush as well. But I can go on my little snowman and I can add a little bit of snow on his hat here. And then I can use the edge of the palette knife to kind of pull it down like little little icicles coming down on his hat and and I'll just do kind of some some random spots on here do a little bit up on his his tassel as well a little bit on his mittens a little bit on his scarf here we've got a little snow on there snowman I still have his eyes to do and that I'll just do with um, black acrylic and actually I have that out here so I'll quickly do that. This little snowman, he has these little beady eyes and I'm going to use, for those of you who have gotten the Moderna, I'm using the 20 Ott liner brush here to do his eyes because they are very, very tiny. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, these brushes were Moderna before. Well, I shouldn't say before the drug company, but Moderna has kind of become a household word um, since COVID. But these are really... What is your YouTube channel? Um, if you just search for Michael Harbridge, um, you'll find there's one, there's only one video right now on the YouTube page. So we haven't put anything out there for um, the YouTube page, but we will be getting the other videos up there. All right, so I'll let the snow dry on here, let the black dry, and then I will spray him. And I'll try to take some pictures and post them in the comment section on here once he's dry, mm -hmm. so that if it is a little pixelated and what you guys are seeing on the camera, um, hopefully the, the picture will be clearer coming through on there. All right, any other questions? Mm, no. All right, so it looks like then it is time to draw for the mystery box. Oops, and I just flicked off of my camera here. Someone just commented that you always make things look easier than they end up being. Them. Well, <laughs> isn't that true with everything? Perfect. Doctors make it look a lot easier too. Doing so, it a long time. yep. So I'm mixing up the names here. All right, and we're drawing a name out, and the name that we drew is Janet Krause, C-R-O-U-S-E. Janet, if you are in here, please comment that you're in here, and I'm going to pull the mystery box up and show you what is in that box, and then um, you'll just go on to learnfiredarts.com, and you can pay for it there. There is a, the number one item is the... Um, mystery box that you can pay by the dollar amount and you would just put 50 in there for the quantity 
and go through the process of, of paying for what's in there. If Janet isn't in here and doesn't comment, um, we will draw another name out, and then Janet will need you once you see what's in this box. All right, once you see what's in here, you can put yes, I want that, or no thanks, and we'll draw another name. So I mentioned it's going to have to do with tonight, and it may have some new items. So we do have some new items. And, you know, part of the reason I do these lives is because we haven't been able to do live workshops very much. And um, so I wanted to show some of the new items. We just got these in a couple days ago. This is a new stencil that you're getting. This is the striped mandala, it's called. And I did do a live event showing how to use stencils um, a while back. This is a brand new one. I really like this one. This is um, Sunflower Meadow, it's called. And this is also a six inch by six inch. I can see this on the side of flower pots and vases and things like that. We are giving you a big bottle of the Softy White that you'll be able to use with the pastel chalks that are in here. This is an 8-ounce bottle of the Mako Softy Acrylic. We've got sponge rollers. The I showed in the live on the stencils how to use sponge rollers with the stencils. Um, I showed some other techniques as well. But those sponge rollers work with the, the stencils. And they'll also work with some brand new stamps that are in here. This is a, a brand new design. This just went up on the website today. This one is called Orbit, um, brand new one. And about these cool little gnome stamps. We've got a, a boy stamp and a girl stamp. And these, I was actually thinking, okay, what am I going to use these on? And for those of you that are coming to retreat, I'll, show, I'll hold this up once I get through the rest of the box and I'll show you what I'm thinking of doing with these gnomes that I think will be really cool. But I think there's a lot of opportunity with those new gnome stamps. These are also up on the website now too, learnfiredarts.com. Um, you're also, Janet, getting a full set of the pastel chalks and you're getting an assortment of, whoops, flat dry brushes in with this one as well. So there's several different size brushes. So let us know, Janet, if you're if you're okay with this box or if you want to pass that on to somebody else. So um, you'll also see on the website, I'm going to flip the, the camera up here. You'll see on the website, uh, learnfiredarts.com, that there's always new items coming oh, up in there. Someone asked about the, we, what the specials, the live events. Yeah, so you'll see when you oh, go into... Said, it's better than Christmas. She wants to <laughs> Okay, good. All right. Um, so you'll see on the website there's a section. You know, we've got everything broken down in categories. And then there's a section in there that's live event specials. So in that live event area, what we do is we number items. So you'll see things like the stencils. You'll see um, we added small assortments of flat dry brushes, small assortments of round dry brushes. Um, the, the stamps are new on there. Um, what else to do? Oh, the pastel, the chalks, of course, are on there. Those are on special for $12.99 for the set. We did put the white acrylic and the iridescent pearl. So I try to make it easy for you guys to find the things that I use during the live event. And those we usually leave up there for a week to two weeks. Um, it's working out well to do these live events every two weeks. And I know some of you are like, oh, no, we need this every week. Um, but it, it's a lot of work, and we still have a lot of orders that we're trying to get out. Um, we're, we're down to, we're probably back up to about 300. Yesterday we were at about 250 orders, and we're probably back up to about 300 today. Um, but we're shipping now orders from the beginning to the middle of March, and we're actually pulling stuff for the, the 23rd and 24th of March now. Um, and then we've got orders from April, but there aren't as many as there were Obviously, in February, we had like 2,000 orders close to, I think, that came in in the month of February and um, first part of March. So um, we're almost caught up. It's more manageable at this point. I feel a lot better about you're where saying. we're at. Um, if, you're, yeah. if you're looking to find out when your order shipping, um, basically, we're working on the March orders right now. Most of the early March orders have shipped. And we're working on, we've got, there are boxes everywhere in this room um, that'll get packed tonight and tomorrow and the next day and into the weekend um, that take us into the middle to the end of March. Um, by the end of the month, we hope to have all the March orders out and be started on the, the April orders. And probably by the 
first week of may hopefully we will be caught up and then the orders that are coming in now are very manageable we're also taking orders that don't contain clay puzzling molds because a lot of people um have been waiting for clay puzzling molds and the ones that have sold the most are like the sphere shapes the trees the pumpkins and so we actually had orders for like hundreds of the spear shapes and we can get out um, about four sets a day with the exception of the largest one um, and so those we have a lot of orders from the end of march that are for the spear shapes and so it some of those spheres spheres may take a little bit longer but most other items are, are pretty well caught up and then we're taking orders that are things like things that we don't manufacture, like the pastels and the brushes and things like that, those orders go into a separate pile and we've got those orders being pulled at the same time. So supply orders aren't taking as long, with the exception of a few things like the dry brushes. Um, there were some recalls on some brushes that we had. And so we've got the new brushes should be coming later this week. Um, stencils have come in, clay cutters have come in again. Um, Shimpo informed us that um, there will not be more of their extruders now until probably middle of June. Um, they're pretty much out of everything. And there's a lot of issues with the ports you've maybe heard coming into the US um, where stuff is backed up up to two months now that it's taking and that it, it might be sitting in a container, but it's taking two months for them because there's so much stuff coming in um, that it's, it's just taking so long to get that product unloaded and there aren't enough truck drivers and semis out there to get all of that product to their destination. So we're still running into some some issues with that. Kilns are still back ordered. I, I talked to Gen Ken today and they're shipping kilns right now that were ordered in December. That's how far behind they are. And pretty much all the kiln companies are behind like that. So I know Mako is behind. There were plastic bottle shortages and that seems to be fixed now. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's happened with COVID that we're going to be seeing six months and a year from now. So, um, got any other questions um, or comments? Question about the gnomes, are they two for $12.99 or $12.99? They're $12.99 each, and then we've got them in there, I think, for the set for $24.99 for them. And I was going to show you guys what I was thinking of doing with those. i got to grab the gnome, but um, we did these clay pots a while back showing stamping on terracotta clay pots and I'm thinking these gnomes all around a clay pot and then doing washes of stroke and coat this one I had started I had demonstrated doing stroke and coat over the top of um, the butterfly stamp on there but I think flower pots with the gnomes would be really cool and then maybe a dimensional clay gnome that we've made next to it so one of the retreat projects is going to be clay pots using the gnome stamps and We'll play around with those as well. So, and the, who knows, that might be alive at some point to showing those. So, any other questions or comments? Um, nope, everybody is really happy and loves your class and learned a lot and appreciates all your hard work. All right, well, thanks everybody. And, and we'll be back in two weeks and we're gonna try to, to do every two weeks from now moving forward until we get caught up, if we ever get caught up, I don't know. <laughs> and then eventually I'll be out on the road and I'm gonna try to still do these live events. A lot of people have asked about that too. They're like, you know, once you start traveling again, are you gonna do live events? And I will, and maybe it'll cut back to once a month. Um, we'll see, who knows what, <laughs> what tomorrow will bring. So thanks for joining us tonight and uh, take care, be safe and have fun creating. And hey, we kept this right to about an hour tonight. Cool. <laughs> All right. Take care.